so what we're going to do in this video, we're going to look at one of the new features of Vector 2022, but we're going to do some testing on this new Mac M1 uh, and see how it performs with twin motion. Okay, so just before I go ahead, I'm going to go into my visualization tools, I'm going to open this up and get the new Datasmith Direct Link tool. And we're just going to go and set this up. I think we'll go for medium resolution to begin with. We'll click OK. And let's just click to set this up and see how long this takes. So the very first time you do the export, um, it will basically un-export the entire Datasmith file. Now that was pretty quick and it will give you a little update that it's been done. Let's go to Twinmotion. Here's the Epic Launcher. Um, that's the first stage. Let's click Launch and just update, or should we say Launch Twinmotion. Then this is the very, very first time I've launched Twinmotion on this uh, MacBook Air M1. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, first impression is it launched quite fast. So that's good. And let's have a quick little look around the model as it is at the moment. Now you've got to bear in mind, you know, these M M1 processors don't have dedicated graphics cards. So that's what I'm really interested to see. I'm going to go to my preferences. I'm just going to go to automatic setup. I might just go to medium to start with. And let's just have a little kind of spin around. Now that's not bad. We're getting a 44 um, frames per second rate and it seems pretty smooth. Let's go ahead and give it a true test by clicking import. Now using the new direct link that uh, Vectors 2022 has, you can see um, I've got my file already available. Okay, and let's go and keep my hierarchy, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably what I'd normally do. Let's click update and see how long it takes to bring in. So, you know, the first impression here is very, very quick to do the import. Um, so let's go and click F to find our model and let's move around. Wow, this is impressive. I really didn't expect this kind of performance from a little backbook air. Um, you can see we're just in medium quality, so I'll crank that up in a minute. Here we go, it's the front of the project here. Let's kind of go all the way around to the back. In fact, I'll just hold shift around, spin it around so we can get around to the back a bit more. Looks really good, actually. So um, one nice thing with Twinmotion is that when you're navigating around, um, you can basically see the frame rate, and once you sort of pause, it will kind of stop. Um, I see a bit of faceting here, but that's probably because I did a medium export, not a high resolution one. And let's have a little spin around of the lighting. That looks really, really cool. Yeah, really nice. So yeah, I could definitely work with this. And there are a couple of ways that you can actually make this um, a bit faster. So the first one is just actually make physically, let me just hide my other software, physically make the window a bit smaller, okay? And actually on a 32 inch screen, that's absolutely fine to do that and you'll get a higher frame rate. The second thing is just to go to preferences, change the quality settings uh, to something medium or, you know, whatever. So I'm gonna go stay in medium, let's click high and see what effect that has and we'll give it a real push and go full screen. Okay, so yeah, it's going a little bit slower now, but it's workable. Let's just see if we can actually drag in a few materials. Let's go and get a tree or something. Uh, all seems to be working fine. That's fine. Let's just drag one of those in. Just give it a second to load. Drag a couple of trees into our image here. That's it. It's pretty nice. Let's go to our bushes. So these are the kind of typical things, you know, you're going to want to do in twin motion once you kind of get into it. Just add a few uh, people, trees, plants, that sort of thing, just to make uh, a really nice little kind of rendered image. We'll just do a tiny bit more work here. It all feels absolutely fine so far. Let's get a couple of people. Now the thing about the people in twin motion is they're animated. Um, so when you drag these in to the model, as you can see, uh, our people here are actually animated and basically Let's just drag one of those ladies in there. Um, we'll do a tiny bit more. In fact, let's go to our landscape. Can't resist going to the weather. And let's just change the weather. Let's make it a little bit kind of more cloudy. Just see what happens if we go a bit rainy. It all seems fine. I mean, it could be um, a bit faster. And I wonder whether the new, oh, I'm looking forward to testing the new MacBook M1X rather with the built-in GPU, hopefully that will be even faster. Um, let's just try the vegetation paint. Now this normally cripples machines that can't cope. So if we drag down uh, a few items of grass and maybe some clover, a few other items, a bit of wild grass in there, select all three of those, get our paintbrush. 
Yeah, it's a pretty big diameter. Let's get that down a bit to say five. And we'll just do a little kind of placement of some grass, rather unkempt lawn this uh, project has. Okay, um, so what we'll do, let's go ahead and see if we can set up a couple of images, maybe a quick animation. Um, so we'll click image, we'll click create image, and we'll just pop to more, and we'll just go to format. I always like to render if I can in 4K, it looks really nice in terms of the resolution. Um, so we'll just kind of set up a couple of those. Let's just go forward a bit more. I think we'll go to a slightly different angle. Let's go forward a bit, bit closer and well, let's adjust the lighting as well. Um, in fact, let's create a new image. And what we'll do to adjust the lighting, of course, is we go to location and time of day. But if you do want to, what's really nice is uh, we can kind of swing the north angle just to kind of get that sun spilling onto the building there. And if I adjust the time, I should be able to kind of go a bit earlier in the year and get some nice shadowing. Looks cool. Okay, another little tip would be to go into lighting and just change the shadow uh, angle or shadow distance rather. Let's go for a, a smaller distance here. will give me sharper shadows, as you can see. Uh, let's go for 75, so a little bit of blur on those. Okay, fantastic. So I've just got these two images. That's absolutely fine. Let's click export load those images up here we go and let's go for it so export those start export let's just save them to my folder that's absolutely fine save them in there let's create a new renders folder and see how quick these are um, so this is a real true test of the processor so i'm kind of interested to see how long it takes to estimate you see the processor ramping up a bit now um, bearing in mind, twin motion is mainly GPU, not CPU. It really is. Uh, so the CPU, you can see, is barely running. It's 22%. So all of this really is GPU-based, actually. Um, there's no way to monitor the GPU. So we'll just go back to twin motion and see where we are. Okay, well, you can see those images are now rendered. Um, so that's pretty awesome. That was quite rapid. Uh, I think it took about 30 seconds in the end. Um, so what we'll do is just pop down and have a look at those full resolution images. Let's go and find them. Documents. Uh, here we go. Jonathan Reeves renders. Here we go. Let's just open these up um, in preview. Now look at that. <laughs> Amazing quality. Took like 10, 15 seconds. Uh, no time at all. In fact, if we go to here, we can actually say, okay, it's 21 seconds for the last render time. That's not bad for two images. That's pretty awesome. Um, I might just do a quick test on a bit of video and then I think we'll be happy. So let's go back to this image, go to media, let's go to video and we'll click to create our first keyframe. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll move forward a bit here, just keep it nice and simple and we'll just pop to another keyframe and actually we might just drop down a bit and across a bit and we'll just see if we can kind of get inside. Here we go. Let's move forward into the space inside. And we'll just finish on this keyframe here. Um, so quick rewind, let's see how this plays in real time. That's fine, it looks good on the screen. 12 frames a second is doable. Uh, looks like we're just gonna swing into that door there. That's absolutely fine just for the purposes of the video today. And what we'll also do, we'll do a quick time lapse. So I'm just gonna go into more settings, location, so you can adjust the time of day so it's a little bit earlier in the day in the afternoon go for about one o'clock there we'll go back second image we'll click more and we'll do a little time lapse where we go a bit later in the day just kind of get those nice shadows on something like i think we're at one o'clock so we'll go a bit later and then we'll finally we'll go through to the inside image click more go to location and let's change the time of day a little bit more. That's quite nice. Just that little bit of glimmer of sun coming in. Wonder if we can kind of get that coming into the building a bit more. We swing, there we go. Swing that north offset around a bit more just to create a nice looking image there. Um, you know, we could <clears throat> add a few more things while we're in here. Just got keen to get a feel for how this works. Let's go to home, go to living room. Uh, let's get some nice plants. All feels really, really usable and quite rapid. Um, and I'm not kind of feeling any lag or anything at all that I couldn't live with. And um, bearing in mind this again, as I say, is on my 30 inch screen. 
this is actually pretty good. So I'll just pan around here. Let's just have a nice photos there. Oh, it's cool. Uh, let's go back to decorations. Let's go for um, some lamps. Let's have a nice little feature lamp in there. It feels really, really good actually, just for adding things into the, the model. Okay, so what we'll do then, let's go back to our animation and let's just do a quick little preview. Fine, it all looks good. Okay, and when we're ready, let's just go and render that out. So I don't need to do the original images again and we'll go now to the video click export. I'm just doing an HD for this one. I don't need to do a 4K on this. And click select. We'll just let that run through. Now videos process a little bit differently to still images um, and twin motion generally is very, very fast. Definitely I can see a little tip that I would do here um, when you're exporting from Vectorworks. I would probably go for high level of um, geometry. <coughs> Well, a little update on progress on the animation. You can see it's going fairly rapidly. Um, it's a, often a bit faster than Twin Motion estimates in terms of time. You can see that time dropping a lot faster than the clock there. So I reckon it will be under five minutes for this little animation here, which is pretty good for a laptop. Um, if you think where we've come from a few years ago, you would have left this running overnight um, and half the time it would crash when you came back in the next morning anyway. So, you know, for a little uh, MacBook Air, M1, Apple Silicon, um, costing a lot less than a thousand pounds, I think this is absolutely fantastic. Um, so I'm really, really excited about the new performance of the Apple Silicon. Let's just wait and see what happens when the new M1X and uh, Apple iMacs come out. I'll definitely be testing those when I get my hands on them. So I really hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Uh, we'll be doing a lot more videos shortly on Vectorworks 2022 and Twin Motion as well. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.